Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Looks like Sean Matreja asked what my favorite food happens to be, and that would be sushi. Salmon, sashimi, specifically. And here in the Pacific Northwest, sushi is awesome. Word camp or pod camp asked by Martin Jones. Uh, I would have to say, well, aren't they really the same kind of audience since most podcasters seem to use WordPress anyway? Uh, if I had a choice between the two, I'd probably say pod camp because they tend to be a bit more entertaining and uh, the attendees smell better than the average blogger. Just saying. The infamous, or is it infamous, Chris Brogan asks, tell me what you anticipate to be your next business model, specifics aside. Uh, I actually kind of soft launched it this weekend, perillo.com. That's not chris.perillo.com, perillo.com. I'm actually going to be in the business of helping businesses. Kind of like what I've been doing anyway, just making it all official. You know, all of it. Touch your tongue to mine. Anybody get the reference? Wayne Hunt asks, what was my most embarrassing business mistake? And I would have to say that is when I um, participated in Chris Krug's Naked Wonders photo series and uh, now have that infamous Alaska photo that's on the internet. But it was also done in conjunction to raise awareness for the sponsor of that particular trip, uh, which is a business that is no longer around, plugged, and uh, yeah, that was, uh, a yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't undo certain things. That's one of them. Business mistake. But, you know, I'm, I'm still here. My good friend Jeffrey Reddy, or Wrighty, I'm not exactly sure. He's apparently not that good of a friend if I don't know how to say his last name. That's the problem with knowing half you guys online. I only see the names. Laverne or Shirley, and uh, this is easy, Shirley. I am way, way, way much more of a brunette guy. Oh, I know blondes may have more fun, but I think brunettes are cuter. Not to start another holy war. Fernando Fonseca asks, what went wrong with the EAV meetup in Seattle? Well, I uh, still love Empire Avenue, and my share price is going up despite spending more time on Google Plus these days. Either way, I think the biggest mistake we made was not charging people, everybody, that is. I mean, we offered the option for VIPs, but I would say the flake factor for people who got a free registration was about 90 plus percent. So the next meetup I do, and I would say any subsequent meetups that I do from here on out will likely have some kind of cover charge associated with them, if only to diminish the uh, possibility of flaking happening. Because when someone puts $5 down on something, they're more inclined to actually see it through. That was the biggest problem. Stacy Jill Calvert asks, who is my favorite person to follow so far on G Plus or Google Plus? And honestly, uh, I don't know if I have a favorite person because you're all my favorite, but I personally like following people who I don't know anything about. Not only because I don't have any preconceived notions of who they are, what they do, uh, but they tend to surface very uh, interesting things that I otherwise would not see. So I'm less inclined to follow someone because they're popular, believe it or not. Uh, I'm more inclined to follow someone I think has uh, really decent content, fun content, and honestly, I'm having a lot of fun, so I'm probably going to be sharing and resharing things that are probably more fun than um, not fun. I don't know. I think you can pontificate and also be playful at the same time, and maybe Google Plus will prove me right. Right, Wicket? My dog in the background. I didn't realize so many of you would ask me questions in that thread, so I'm doing my best to answer all of them, but it seems like I'm going to have to start cherry picking. Uh, have a question from Raymond M. Christensen. What is the biggest change in attitude towards technology among geeks since you started Locker Gnome, in your opinion? Well, I started Locker Gnome in 1996, and I think the biggest change in attitude is um, I think we're a lot more open to exploring different options. And I realize it sounds odd, but uh, I am far less inclined to go towards one brand over another. So I think uh, an overarching trend seems to be, as much as we talk about branding being everything, branding is also nothing. I, I think if you have a great product, uh, I think it's going to stand out beyond your brand, uh, You know, potentially even pull your brand through, uh, I guess, other problems. I'm not saying that it would be you know, 
a, a silver bullet, you know, having an awesome product. But I think geeks are far more inclined to look at interesting things uh, regardless of who brings them forward. And I think that's one of the reasons why Kickstarter uh, projects have been so successful. Uh, you know, and I think that's the biggest trend uh, that's happening, uh, you know, and that speaks to another trend that would be we are kind of taking control of our own destiny. Projects like Kickstarter, uh, you know, if you ever picked up uh, Make Magazine online or in the printed capacity, uh, you know, we're, we're making this world ourselves. Larry Miller asks, do you wish that Tech TV was still around? And if so, what do you think the topics you guys would be talking about these days? Uh, that was the question as phrased by uh, Larry. Uh, and yeah, of course I wish Tech TV was still around, but I think it is still around, just not in the capacity that we once knew it, like on the traditional television screen. Now it's on, more on the virtual television screen. Uh, I, I would say Tech TV is around largely because, uh, it, the spirit of, largely because of what Leo's doing with Twit. I mean, you want to talk about reinventing the way media is done. Leo's doing it. Uh, so it is still around. I would just look to him. Um, you know, I think in a broader sense, certainly people who were on tech TV, like myself or Kevin Rose or Patrick Norton, etc., are still producing uh, content that's worth watching. You can still experience tech TV. Uh, you're just probably not going to get it the same way that you got it before. And in many ways, you could likely be happier because now you are encouraged to interact with us and we are encouraged to interact with you. And I don't know if we had the same agenda uh, when we worked for a big corporation. That being said, I would love to see some t really, really, really good tech-related programming back on the airwaves specifically for consumer electronics or just consumer technologies specifically for geeks by geeks and I don't know if that's financially viable especially with the uh, meltdown of tech TV that turned into G4 whatever the hell that station is these days this may have to be the last rapid-fire question I post because I have no idea if I'm annoying other Google Plus users and likely have kicked myself out of their circles without knowing it Linda Giddens asks why on earth do you buy your electronics at Best Buy before today that is uh, well speaking their their prices aren't horrible at least if you're not buying cables and uh, the store is nearby so when I need something now or for the next day and I can't count on Amazon Prime uh, it's just as easy to pop down to uh, the local Best Buy Superstore and uh, and take a look at uh, the products that are there especially if I know I can get a product there and really either not waste my time or necessarily waste my money. What upset me was specifically in relation to uh, being denied a, a coupon and in, in a variety of other, um, I guess, jobs like what I did at Best Buy that would be at that time I was selling computers back in 1995 for like a month. I almost got fired from Best Buy too. That's another story altogether. Either way, um, you know, it's not that the customer's always right, but doing whatever you could for a customer, I think is paramount for any uh, any particular store. So the clerk who was checking me out and denied me the uh, option to save 10% on the network devi networking device, the cable modem in question, and there's the YouTube video. I don't know if someone wants to link to it in the subsequent comment thread for this particular video. Um, she easily could have called a manager. Why would why was the onus on me? to uh, complain and to take it to the point where I took it. And that being said, I'm glad I posted the video because uh, I think there were at, uh, I think about 11 a.m. this morning Pacific time, 500 comments on that video and only 10 people disliked it and like 200 people liked the video on YouTube, specifically my issue with Best Buy. This is systemic. It's not just me who has these problems and uh, there's a larger story at play and that's, uh, you know, empower clerks, uh, the, the people on the floor, to take charge. Uh, they need to make me happy. I'm a customer, paying customer. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, my problem. It wasn't my problem. The cable modem is a networking device. Just because the word modem wasn't on the coupon for 10% off doesn't mean that I shouldn't have been able to save 10%. And it also doesn't mean that it was my responsibility to call a manager. Period. End of story. So I, I don't know if I'm going to shop there uh, again based on this, depending on how Best Buy responds, I guess. So the onus, again, is on them.